This is an Undiscovered Legacy production. Don't tell me I can't do something. Mm -hmm. And that driving force, don't tell me I can't not do it. Or don't tell me I can't do it because that's going to make me do it. It's you have to have that drive. You have to have, I mean, there's something if, if you don't have a drive about what you're doing, then switch it up, do something a little different and find a different thing in your passion. Don't necessarily stick with what you believe needs to be what it is. Hello, Scoob Believers, and welcome to episode number 83 of The Undiscovered Entrepreneur, and it's me, Scoob, <laughs> coming at you to whatever device we happen to be listening on. Okay, so to, before I do any introductions today, I want to make a couple of really super special announcements. Okay, announcement number one, I have put together a speaking engagement for us as Scoob Believers on October 22nd, that's going to be held at the Four Seasons Inn in Branson, Missouri. So they have a little bitty stage there that I'm gonna use and I'm gonna do a live broadcast for everybody here, all my school believers online. And if you just have to be in the area, please come see me there. It's gonna be October 22nd at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Look for invites on Facebook, look for them on Twitter or X, whatever. Look for them on LinkedIn. I have invites in all those places. So make sure you check those out and save yourself a seat for my very first live talk that I'm going to do on a stage. Okay, and thing number two, I just started a brand new Facebook group for all my school believers out there to be able to talk to each other and probably talk to a lot of the guests that I have in my podcast. If you have questions for them, want to talk about their services, want to talk about their experiences. Look for Across the Start Line, the Undiscovered Entrepreneur Facebook group. I will have the link to that in the show notes. So if you want a very easy way to join that, talk to me directly or talk to any of my possible guests that I've had there, please do me a favor. Do that. Go down to the show notes right now or go to tuepodcast.net forward slash Facebook group. That's tuepodcast.net forward slash Facebook group. All right, so today we are talking to an entrepreneur, very good friend of mine, Joe Burgess. Now, Joe Burgess came from being brain dead for five days after a major accident to become an entrepreneur focused on helping other master their mindset. His journey from severe brain injury to business owner showcases the power of determination and resilience. And let me tell you something, this guy's got some determination and resilience. He was a fascinating and despite being told he never overcome his anger issues, Joe has transformed his life and now aims to help others change their lives in just five minutes a day. That's all it takes sometimes is just five minutes a day. This unique approach combines insight from his personal struggles with cutting edge understanding of conscious and the brain. This is going to be an amazing interview. Don't miss it. So let's listen to my friend Joe. Salutations, school believers, and we are here again with another amazing entrepreneur. Today we're here with Joe. Hey, Joe, how you doing? Hey, buddy, I'm doing very well. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day today to be on the Undiscovered Entrepreneur, getting across the start line. I really appreciate you. It's as much for me as it is for you, my friend. We're all one in this universe. All right, Joe, I do have one kind of semi-serious question to ask you. Are you ready? Of course. Okay. Are you a school believer? Of course. All right. What I be? <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thanks for being a school believer. I super appreciate you. No All worries. Right, so, no worries. All right. So, Joe, what I'd like to do here in the very beginning is get an idea of who you are, what your entrepreneur adventure is, and, and how you got across the start line in your entrepreneur adventure. I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily over the start line. I'd say I, I do have my LLC and I am licensed in the state of Florida. I... So I do have all that. I am, my journey began a long time ago with my issue with my head in, with my head injury. Overcoming those obstacles has been a lifelong or in my, all my adult life, I've had to learn how to overcome obstacles. So that was never learning how to overcome it. Any obstacles wasn't really an obstacle or a problem for me because I've been doing it since I was brain dead for five days. So the obstacles of my business have come with 
getting down, getting, feeling like I'm not doing enough and things like that. I mean, I, I don't really, I don't know if I'm trailed off. I may be on a different topic now because I I don't look, this is my issue that I actually see in other people. They come into a problem. See, I look at life as a solution and waiting to be discovered. There are no problems in my life. I, I, there's a solution for any problem that I I can find. And that's how I process. So I don't look at obstacles as obstacles. I, they're just another step of our journey to help us learn what we need to learn so that we're able to come to reach the destination that we want to get to. Me personally, I needed to relocate to Florida. I needed to surround myself with people who were like-minded, people who were smarter than I was. I, I, I don't believe in ever being the smartest person in the room unless I'm alone or when I had a dog, my dog. But so I, I believe in surrounding yourself with people who are smarter than you. If you want success, then you should surround yourself with at least five people who are more successful than you to get where you want to do. And people who have done it, talk to them, be friends with them, hang out with them if you can. I've spent a long time never thinking that I was good enough. And so I sat there and I learned and I learned and I learned and I learned. And I just kept compiling all this stuff. But because of my head injury, I don't remember things. So I, I learned one thing now and then I move into a new, another aspect and then move into another aspect. So I'm constantly changing and it's it's made me who I am. But I have the information in my in my unconscious mind. So occasionally I'll see something that will trigger something in my mind that will be like, Hey, this is the way that it is. And so I, I've also, I feel like I'm talking way too much. I want to hear from you. No, no, what, no. That's the, that's, I mean, what, that's the nice thing about a podcast is you can talk as much as you want. And I, I will interject things every once in a while that, that kind of pop into my head, but this is about you, Joe, this is your story. So don't be afraid to tell us what you're, what's going on. Okay, it's you know I can break it. <laughs> this hope I'm hoping that this honestly helps a lot of people because I will share vulnerabilities with you that people may be able to relate with, but I don't look at vulnerable vulnerabilities as a weakness. I look at it as a strength to overcome. So I was like for recently I've had to learn my lessons about communication. I understood communication within the body. I understood commu verbal communication, but I didn't understand like social media communication. Years ago, when I joined Facebook, I started joining groups and stuff and people were like, the trolls were commenting and doing whatever. And I didn't know how to deal with it emotionally, mentally. And so I quit going to the groups. So then I recently started a couple months ago because I was trying to test out the market and see what people were into and what are certain triggers for people and what were things I could learn about different aspects of my the marketing aspect of my business. And so I just started talking to people and then I would comment and post and then people would like you automatically get the negative people who are like, my biggest thing was, I turned my weakness and I, I I went to an ADHD support group and I told them, I posted, I turned my strength into a weakness. I, my ADHD, I turned it into a superpower. Everybody blew up. So many people hated me. So many people were like, you're such a hater. You're such a gaslighter. So then I stopped going to that and I completely left that group because the women in that group were like treating me like I was a case study. And they're talking to me like, they talked to me when I was in the hospital. And so I am very sensitive to that. So I don't, if I see a line of questioning and I know what your line of questioning is because I've already been through it. I've already experienced it. So I understood that. So I just left that group. Then I started paying attention to traumatic brain injury support groups. And then I got the same thing there. I'll, I was telling that I would give advice and all this kind of stuff. And so many people would comment I'm gaslighting them and I'm like making myself like above them and putting them down and putting them under my thumb. And it's like, that's not my intention at all. My intention is literally love. When I was a kid, my mom told me that I was a being of love. 
I've had, I held that all my life. And then I realized that when I got my car accident, that I had the separation from that state of being. So then I just figured out what the gap was and then I overcame it. And then now I understand how to process it. I've recently started, I got turned on to hypnosis again hmm. because there was a, hypno, a hypnosis academy that I watched on Instagram or YouTube or some on Facebook, something. And it really intrigued me because he, he was talking about like the science behind why hypnosis works. And that is exactly what I do. That's why I do what I do. That's it's, that's how I got out of my negative state of being. That's how I, it's how I'm able to, when I see an obstacle, it's not an obstacle. It's not an issue. It's a problem. It's a solution. So, and because of, I studied hypnosis and self-hypnosis because of, I, I studied the brain. I understand. I studied the mind. I mean, being brain dead, you want to as understand as much as you can about yourself first and foremost. So I did that. And then I started learning stuff that was about other people. And then I started learning more stuff that was like about more people and then started learning more stuff about more people and more people. And so it was evolved into what I'm doing now. It's I, I'm literally the most famous person in the world who is not yet discovered. And because with what I know, it's being able to use the realm of hypnosis as an ideology, then I can, I break it down into, okay, we have the conscious mind, which is this, this is our conscious mind. Our nervous system is responding to stimulus. Then there's our subconscious mind, which is our experience. So our experience will dictate how our conscious mind will interpret. So then we have the unconscious mind, which is also the part of our core being that is essentially our belief structure. So if you believe this, that, or anything else, then you're going to, that's going to be your version of reality. Then that version of reality uses the subconscious mind to filter out how to go through things and how to, okay, this is you, well, how, th I believe this, my memory tells me that my experience is this, so it's a parallax, so there's two visions looking at a single point, and then the conscious thought uses the, is the moment is perceiving stimulus it's perceiving time it's reality it's we're sharing this moment in time because we're both breathing at this exact moment if we weren't then we wouldn't be sharing one of us would be do you see what i'm getting at I, I yeah, mean, yeah 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 it's it, we're we're both breathing and that's the most important thing is when you start to get overwhelmed just stop and breathe Gotcha. Yeah, that's why a lot of people say when you're when you're feeling that frustration or feeling that something, take a step and just take a breath so you could calm your mind and start processing things the way it should be instead of being in fight or flight or freeze mode. You could take yeah. that second so you can understand what's happening with you. You know what I could do for you here? Just I, this just popped in my head as you were talking here, Joe. I have a friend of mine who is a hypnotherapist that I actually I actually recorded a couple times with named okay. J. Robert Parker. I could put okay. you in touch with him if you want to talk about hypnosis. He would be more yeah, than happy to talk to you. The other thing, yeah, the other thing that kind of hits me is we all, especially when we're just getting started, it seems like the first hurdle that we have to go through is getting through the trolls, getting through those people that, that don't believe in you or don't think that you could do what you do. But the one thing that always comes across my head when I talk about trolls or I hear about trolls is hurt people hurt people. Yes. A lot of these people that are out there trolling or doing it really have something going on with themselves, something going on in their head that's negative that they have to, they just seem like they have to project it out to somebody else to make themselves feel better. So sometimes I, when I come across trolls, which we all come across trolls in, in our entrepreneur adventure, I think right. about, I wonder what they're going through right now that makes them have to do this. And the other thing too is community. It's sometimes especially in certain situations, it's hard to find a very supportive community to, to understand what you're doing or understand what you've gone through. Cause not everybody's gone through what you've gone through. Right. So they can't, 
they can't maybe they can't process it or they can't understand it so they tend to go to the negative because if there's something that we don't understand we tend to to go negative about it exactly. so sometimes sometimes we have to start our own community i mean you we can start our own community about hey this is what i've experienced would you help will you join me in that kind of thing so i mean sometimes that's, that's what we got to do that's actually a good lead into the fact that my facebook group mindset mastery llc now tell me, group, tell me a little more about that <clears throat> it's not really a lot going on there's i just recently started it there's 74 people so far who are that's a good start it. It, i'm basically just i'm not having a lot of interaction yet so i would love your audience to join it and start some conversations i'm a huge conversation person so i i post things in a inquisitive way i believe that so I was talking about hypnosis and all that. So we, we are what we believe. And so then when if we hear outside of what we believe, then it's going to either instill fear because we're going to be offended, we're going to feel attacked, or we're going to be curious. I And I'm trying to figure out how to reach into the curious group. The curiosity is what I'm after. The people who, are, if you're curious about anything in your life, then it's, the solutions are waiting, are there waiting to be discovered. And that's my, I, that's where I get off in life. It's, I, I love helping people figure out what they need to do to figure out what they need to do. Whether that be, you asked me something and I trailed, I'm my ADHD, I so apologize. But I, I just help people do what they do. Oh, the, the page. I, I there's just stuff. I post, I'm good. I'll post, start posting is that more people come about just things that about how the, how to have a proper mindset of ways to deal with things of, I I'm a very firm believer in love and fear are our emotional response. So then we're either, and everything is just all the feelings are just a subset of those emotions. So when we're angry, we're fearful. When we're jealous, we're fearful. When we're joyful, we're ha we're loving. So that when I was talking earlier about a being a being of love, that's what it evolved into was I, I somewhere along the line, I picked up that our emotional response is love or fear. And I don't remember exactly where it was that I heard it, read it or saw it or was told it, but that always stuck in my mind. So I've always sought that solution. Be, technically, that's my reticular activating system. So it's, it's, it's that with focusing on a specific thing. And then every time I found something that applies to that, then I just latch onto it and I write it down and I take notes and I write about it and trying to put all the pieces together so that I can help people as quickly as I can possibly help them. A lot of people have eight, 10, 12 week programs. And I have a six week program and like, it's, you get done what you need to get done so you can do what you need to do. It's, I don't believe in wasting time. And I just, I just, if you want to waste time, then I don't necessarily have the time. But it's, we need to get stuff done in this world. We need to stop being fearful. We need to learn how to process and overcome our fears and our obstacles so that we can become the best versions of ourselves. That's right. That's the way to do it, too. Overcome those fears. Do you know, do you happen to know the acronym for fear? Have you heard that before? everything and run but i also look i look at it as false energy appearing real close that's a very very close false evidence appearing real but it's a pretty much the same thing i i i've i <laughs> yes i did actually i think i came up with a the fear everything and run it i applied nikola tesla to the fear energy and run so everything is energy so and that's what a big part of what I do is I, everything is energy. So everything right. is positive or negative. Everything is a, res, a a state of resonance until it's met by chaos of some sort. So yeah. Oh, so makes perfect sense. Yeah, absolutely. Let me ask you this question. When it comes to getting across the start line, what do you think holds a lot of entrepreneurs back from actually getting started? Fear, fear of failure, fear of not being good enough, fear that, somebody else is better than them fear that they're not good enough. Yeah. That actually wraps around a lot of what we talk about in my, in my podcast, imposter syndrome, 
fear, fear of failure, all these things that that people have to that they really think they have to worry about to even just start something. I mean, even just read a book or or ask somebody a question or join a Facebook group about what they're thinking. They're so scared about what can happen, what what does the future hold? What if I keep going along? And getting over those getting over the start line is the first step of actually getting over any of those fears mm-hmm. because you start realizing that this is something I can do. This is something that will help me. If we don't start, yeah. there's no finish. Exactly. With that being said, that remind like my mind, and I don't I don't know how anybody else's brain works because I'm not in their brain, so I know how my mind works and I understand how the brain works and all that kind of stuff. So my brain every time I, you mention these things, I'm these stories are coming to me and that are like over the years and the things that and what got me over that obstacle was the, the of the imposter syndrome or the perfectionist and all that kind of stuff was. 80 20 so when you start like 80 percent is good enough to pass and that's all you need to do is just have 80 percent that's that and because then that 20 percent is still there for the future for you to learn for you to get smarter for you to overcome the 20 percent is the obstacles that you don't know how to overcome the 80 percent is just it's committing it's it set your intention and then when you set your intention, the universe will start putting things in your path. Every single person that's going to listen to this today is going to exactly be exactly where they need to be to hear this information. And if they don't hear this information, then they're not supposed to be in that location. Meaning that that's the thing It's there's so many marketing tactics and all this kind of stuff. And is mine good enough? Is this good enough? And Every single marketing tactic works for somebody. I'm sure that it works for all the people, all the people that you like get 10 million followers in two weeks. And I'm sure that doing what you're doing and having your connections, having your, your abilities, I'm sure that it's possible, but trying to say that I can do that or saying that I can make a million dollars in a year doing what you told me to do when I was in second grade. My teacher tied me in my chair because I kept getting up and walking around the classroom. So I've had ADHD my entire life. So somebody trying to tell me what to do is part of the reason why I am who I am. Because when I got out of the hospital, I would even when I was in the hospital, I went on a Friday, I walked a hundred feet. And then on the Monday, I walked over a quarter of a mile. My physical therapist told me that she had never seen anybody do that. It was like amazing, whatever. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Then I started walking more and more. Then I was fine with my walking abilities. Then doctors told me that I wouldn't do this. Then I would, they told me I wouldn't do this. Then I took a neurological evaluation that said I'd never have impulse or anger control. That's exactly why I learned everything that I did because it, they told me that I wouldn't be able to control my mind. Don't tell me I can't do something. Mm-hmm. And that's a driving force. Don't tell me I can't not do it. Or don't tell me I can't do it because that's going to make me do it. It's You have to have that drive. You have to have, I mean, there's something, if, if you don't have a drive about what you're doing, then switch it up. Do something a little different and find a different thing in your passion. Don't necessarily stick with what you believe needs to be what it is because it, When you believe something is a certain way, then you're allowed to fail. You're allowed to, your expectations may not meet. So you're going to get upset. You're going to get frustrated. And when you're upset and frustrated, that isn't going to help you anything with anything because your mind is in a survival state of consciousness. So if your mind is sitting there looking for a fight, looking for a fight and everything you're doing, then you you're not going to be open to the opportunities and the availability of the Nate or of the universe to actually show you new things and show you a new way of doing it. Because that's what I needed. If I, if I would have been born, raised Catholic and I were still Catholic and I believed in all that kind of stuff, I would be nothing of what I am. But when I started learning about spiritual stuff and about like spiritual guides and just, that's when 
I, I don't know. I, you understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. When I started opening up my, my existence, that's when the dreams and the visions started coming to me and the truth started coming to me. And I would have places like I would go places and not know how to get there, but I would end up there. And it was like, I had plans already in my mind of how to get there, but it, because I was open to the universe showing me the way exactly. it was, it, I don't have, when you relinquish control, that's when you have the most control because it, if we, let's say we have two people working for us. If you don't trust those two people to do their jobs for what you hired them for, then is the problem with them or is it really with you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to figure out. It's when you hire somebody or you uh, well, and we'll just use the example of hire somebody when you're hiring somebody to work for you and do you their job. If they're not doing their job, then they get fired. Right. I mean, it's a thing. So it's then, yeah, it's, you just have to learn how to the communication, because if the communication is bad, then there's going to be resentment. And then because I have a whiteboard be up there and it, I have a problem, a uh, problem list and a solution list. And the in business, the problem is communication. If there's a bit a problem within the business, it's so you're not communicating effectively, efficiently. So changing the verbiage of the way the words are communicated, the way that because with what I believed, I was stuck in what I what I like thought in my mind. But when I acknowledged what my feelings were my emotional body, then they were conflicting and I couldn't find the balance. But then when I finally found the balance, that's when I started to actually manifest things. Because when you're having confliction between what is good, moral, just, I can, I, I feel valid for selling this product or the imposter syndrome too. That's a big part of this too, because it's, I'm not worthy of, I have a $10,000 program to be honest with you. If you want to work for with me for a year, I'll give you a $20,000. I'll sell you a $50,000 program because I know what I do works. And it's just, it's not a matter of selling it to sell it. It's getting you the results so that you don't need to struggle. So you don't need to fight. So you don't need to have the issues. So it, I, I look at it. This all sounds grandiose and I, I, I may sound crazy, but my, okay. I, I once met this, a nuclear engineer or that worked for the government. He was some new, I don't, some really smart quantum engineer type kind of guy had four master's degrees. He got moved around from place to place because he worked for the government. He was developing a battery for Lamborghini he was doing, he was just a super really smart guy. And I met him when I first moved to Florida. I didn't know him from anything, but then I, I knew he was smart. And I had this theory in my mind about perception of reality and all this kind of stuff. And I told him what I thought. And he's, yeah, that's the Lorenz theorem. And so it's the stuff that the hypnosis, that that's a huge, I don't, I sound crazy, but that's why. I'm my role model that, I mean, because I've, I've done all this stuff and I figured all this stuff out and I put it together and I just, I just want to help people put theirs together. It begins with love and fear. Then with love and fear, you have comfort and uncomfort. If you're not comfortable, then you're in a state of fear because comfort is homeostasis. So it's not really that hard to understand. It's, it's just, it's more or less breaking down the barriers and understanding the cause as to why you are the way you are. Because we're all limitless potential. I mean, we can do whatever we want to do, except we're being held back by what our mind is telling us is possible. So if we don't believe that I'm worthy of $10,000 or $5,000, then you're not going to be. That's Whether right. you believe you can or you can't, you're right. Exactly, exactly. And I've heard that many times from other entrepreneurs too. Whether you're wrong or you're right, you're right. So, <laughs> 
I, I like the fact, first of all, going through the 80-20 rule that we talked about, there's a lot of things you can apply that 80-20 rule to, whether it's 20% of what you do is 80% of this. There's a lot of ways to do it. I'm, I'm going to let you all take that into t- interpretation. But I think the thing that kind of strikes me most is when, when we have a negative problem or somebody tells you you can't do something, there's several ways that you can take that. You could take that as, well, if he thinks I can't, then I, then I probably can't. Or we could say, just watch me. Right. And I think the, the part that, that you take and the part that I did take, too. So I think we have a lot of common ground here is if somebody tells me I can't do something, I tell them, just watch me do it and I will do it. I will set right. my mind to where I need to be and what I need to do to accomplish the thing that you said I couldn't accomplish. And that, I think, really what sets entrepreneurs apart from anybody else that thinks they can not accomplish something. And I think that's why we are entrepreneurs of who we are and what we do is because we take those little cues, those little things about what we do in our day-to-day lives that most people say, you can't do this, or are you crazy to do this? And then we say, watch me, just watch me do this. And then suddenly we do it. And not only do we accomplish what we set out, but we learn things on the way to accomplishing those things that said we couldn't, that couldn't be done and learn new things that we can accomplish. So earlier when I was talking about the verbiage within a business and the communication, that's where I don't, it the, what I was talking about earlier. So when you said that it dawned on me that you don't understand what I think or what is going on in my mind. So we, when you can or can't do something or whatever, it's, I have the ability to do this or I have the inability to do this because either if the information is still there. So either you're going, either you, your brain processes as I can do this or I am unable to do this. So if I am unable to do this, the only thing that you need to do is learn. You just have to fill in the gaps with knowledge. And this is actually more monumental than hiring a coach or anything, because if you can figure out your own gaps and then you can fill those gaps yourself, then you've just done something that not very many other people have done, which makes you more valuable, makes you more powerful, makes you more insightful because you're advancing. Your, Cause so human consciousness begins with a survival state. Then that survival state, it expands its, its knowledge base or its information. Then it becomes the knowledge base expands. Then as it gains the knowledge, it begins to understand it then it begins to affect it or apply it to life. Then it begins to comprehend it. Then it gains the awareness. So once you, those are the levels of consciousness. So in, so in like in hypnosis, you like, I've done this. So you, the ability to trans, so it's state of what is that? I forgot trans state. If you, if you like a trans state is a focus. If you're focused on something, all you have to do, you, sometimes you can just touch somebody. You can tap somebody, totally take them out of the trans state. Or if you're, if somebody's incensed, like angry and fighting with somebody, you stop, breathe. It's it, earlier we were talking about something, but and I, I have a four second rule. I used to have road rage, and that was my way of dealing with that. Was I don't know what they're going through in this life, and right now their wife may be at home or in the hospital. They may be racing to get their sick child or whatever. I don't know what's going on with them. So any any time that I need to stop and if so we all observe we have the availability to observe observe triggers so the thing i'm saying if if some somebody is going to cut you off and what your response typically is then you can manipulate your behavior so that you enter into a different scenario that's where the four step my four second rule applies if i'm unhappy if i felt myself starting to get angry if i saw my but myself start becoming anxious, I would just stop and take my foot off the gas for four seconds. And so that would let the car move on and I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have to deal with them anymore. And then I could just start my journey again. And I've taken that same approach with a lot of things. It's when somebody's starting to make you angry, just stop, step back and just take a second and breathe and just re then reapproach it. I mean, that's literally the flea response is you're just when you're fleeing from something, it doesn't mean that you're running away. It just means you're stepping back so you can get a clear head. 
Because when you're fighting something, you have all your chemicals, all the emotions going on within you, all these memories and all these things that you're going to take it personally and you feel attacked because they're attacking you when it's just an idea that may be different than yours. Yeah, if you know that, if you know that that response is coming, if you could recognize the signs of that of that emotion that's coming on, you're more likely to be able to control that emotion, take those four seconds. I mean, just just feeling that coming on and recognizing it's coming on is half the battle because you know what yeah. how to <laughs> respond after that if you already know what's coming, right? And that exactly. takes a lot of time, that takes repetition, that takes awareness of your of your mental abilities, that takes awareness of your surroundings. So you know emotional that's coming. Response. It's that your I, emotional response to stimulus. So exactly. if by understanding your emotional body, it's and through I, that's what I do in meditation. I we go through this different phases of why we're actually we why we are hypnosis does it too. It's like meditation is like you. I that's how I did it. Was I did I did self hypnosis with my meditation and all that kind of stuff. So I learned all the triggers and I learned all that. That's how I came up with all this way to do the stuff. I don't. I've never heard of anybody else talk about what I'm talking about because I. I don't know that anybody ever else really has thought of it, at least put it together the way that I have. There's pieces of, I, I'm not who I am because I am who I am. I'm be, I am who I am because there are a lot of brilliant genius people who came before me that I can look at Einstein and I can understand the fact that he sat on a train looking at a clock, pondering whether or not that time was perceived by the, the same way as him riding on the train as a person standing on the side of the road. I, it's, I didn't think of that. He did, but he, but I'm expanding on that consciousness on that knowledge of let's perceive it this way. For example, I was watching a, a astrophysics show on TV and a astrophysicist was talking about something about a car coming down the road and slamming on the brakes and swerving. And then, her jerking and knocking the tr- knocking her coffee off the table and they had a picture on the TV of a coffee cup tipping over and all this kind of stuff and she was explaining time in that process and that's where that understanding from that mechanic or that engineer that I, I don't even he's the, I don't even remember I'm so drawing blanks on he was just a super smart guy but was that that's not actually time time is actually our nervous system the way that our nervous system is responding to t- to the stimulus that it's perceiving, that's time. Everything that has happened before is your observation. So what you think has happened before has only happened to you. Nobody else has experienced that. Not even a twin can say the same thing mm-hmm. because they've experienced two different realities because their nervous system perceiving stimulus, which is traveling through the amygdala or through the hippocampus, through the amygdala, the frontal lobe, that's each of us. That's all I am. That's all you are. But I have a narrative that I'm expressing based on my experience that gives me the insight, the knowledge, whatever to share with you and whoever's listening to exa- expand your consciousness. I'm huge. I, I went to a International Brain Injury Association conference when I was trying to get a nonprofit, head injury nonprofit going. And I didn't know what to do. I was stuck. So I heard somebody say, find the biggest summit conference, whatever you can find and go to it. And so I did that. So I went to the International Brain Injury Association conference in New Orleans a few years ago, well, about six years ago now. And I just went in there with some pamphlets and some brochures and leaflets. I didn't know what I was doing. I was completely clueless, but I what I I didn't allow fear to stop me from doing anything that I needed to do. So I did it. And I'm sitting in the, the audit or not or the lobby of the hotel. And I'm watching all these neuro professionals walk by and all of a sudden, uh, another guy who has a nonprofit for head injuries called bison brain injury, something, something he sat next to me and we were talking and then they were ended up going into a conference room to listen to some lectures so I followed him and I'm like, is it all right if I go in? And I wasn't invited or anything. So I was just sort of tagging along. And I was sitting there, I was sitting there talking, and there's a presenter up there, and he was almost done 
And he said, who of us actually understand? He was talking about consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I said, and he said, who of us actually understands consciousness? And in this room of five, 600 neuroprofessionals, doctors, neurosurgeons, neuropsychologists, I raised my hand. I'm like, I do. And they just all laughed at me. And so that kind of set me on my path. It's you're laughing at me because you don't understand what I'm talking about. And to me, it, it didn't offend me. It was just the whole thing of you can't do it. Mm -hmm. Really? Seriously? You're going to challenge. You're going to give me a challenge to overcome. I've already overcome not being able to walk, talk, breathe, you know, brush my teeth. I've already overcome that. I've overcome all my anger issues. I used to punch things constantly because I had so much rage within me. So it, I, I, there were things that were destroyed all over my house, my ex's house, my car. So I've overcome all those obstacles because I was told by the medical field that I would never overcome those obstacles. Now I am who I am. And you couldn't make me mad for anything. You might upset me. You might make me fearful for a second, but as soon as I figure it out and figure understand what's going on, that's my thing with politics. It's I don't want to talk about it, but it's there are both sides, and I'm not saying either side is right or wrong, because they're a nervous system that's processing stimulus, and it's just it, anytime you start to get heated about anything, it's pull back with what I do, with what I teach with what I help people with is it teaches you how to pull back and then just, okay, I believe this, or I don't believe this. And I don't need to give it any attention. I don't know. I'm just a huge person in helping people figure out how to deal with day-to-day -day struggles and problems and whether it be life relationships. That's because you've been through it. I mean, you've, yes. you've already experienced it for yourself and now you want to share those experiences with other people to help people with what you, what you've learned for yourself, what you know works for you. So if you know it works for you, it's got to work for somebody else too. And you want to have those services and be, be able to expand and help other people because that's what we do. Indeed. I'm going to ask a different question here. If you were to come across a new entrepreneur like yourself, would you be able to give them any advice? Do you have advice, advice for new entrepreneurs possibly? Put yourself out there. Don't be scared to put yourself out there. It's... You, you can't, nobody is going to listen if you're not getting yourself out there. If you're not going to be heard, you need to be heard by specific people sometimes, niches. But if you can't find your mark, my thing is that in high school, I learned a lot about marketing because my dad owned a business all my life growing up since the spring before I was born. He had a Volkswagen auto repair shop in Michigan. And so, I've always been associated with business. I've always had a business mind and because I was my brother's own businesses, my sister's own businesses, my brother-in-law's own. And so it's just in my family. So it, I've always had, I was always taught by a marketing teacher in high school that you can market anything and it'll sell if you market it the right way. And so that's, that's been my biggest thing is figuring out how to market and who to market to. And I'm trying to do it literally from nothing to something like I'm, I'm doing this. It's part of my journey. It's part of my story. It's part of my movie. It's part of my book. It's all of this is part of that. It's I started writing my book years ago and I didn't know how the end was going to be. And I didn't know the last chapter of the book, but this is the last chapter of this book. So it's figuring out, going from a brain dead state to, hi, I own this business that's thriving. And so, and all the difficulties in between and what I've overcome. And it's, it's a lot like what you do. It's what you're trying to do. It's, I've just had a different experience in my life that gives me a different perspective and insights into doing stuff. It's so, I commend you for what you do because it's helpful and useful. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, Joe, speaking of what I'd like to know here is in the next six months, where do you see you and your business? I mean, do you have a six month goal for yourself and your company? And it's, I'm, to be honest with you, my, I have a six month and then I have a 10 to 12 month goal and it's going to sound absolutely crazy, but it's going to sound crazy, crazy. It's, I need to get a couple of clients 
and then once I can get a few clients, then I, and I can understand. That's the last thing I need to do is understand how to get clients, paying clients, people who want to change their life, who are not not coachable, people who are who want to grow and expand. And then once I can find them, then I want to move into group coaching sessions, and then that which will all that will just go into a big part of what my knowledge about all this stuff is and my what I've, I've, I've been spending I've been trying to figure out how to do this for 15 years so I've gone over all kinds of stuff and I haven't had money all the time I'm on disability I because of my brain injury so I'm literally doing something that I shouldn't be doing at all but I'm doing it and I'm proving everybody wrong once again so it's if you want to help prove somebody wrong, I'm the guy to help you do it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, Joe, what I'd like to do with you is in six months, I'd like to actually have another interview with you just like this. Yeah. yeah Follow yeah. up with you, see if you're able to accomplish getting a couple clients under your belt, maybe even starting a few group coaches and see if we've accomplished that. Is that okay, Joe? I would love that. I would love to share this journey with you, my friend. That's what we're going to do. This is going to, this is going to turn into something because I'm not just a small little fish in a pond. It's, I, I have plans and I've seen things and I'm, a, I'm, 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 we'll get there. I really think you could do it, Joe. I really do. I know you I have do. a lot of good things going for you. I think you could, you could accomplish all this if you keep going the way you're going. I know. I know I can. I don't need you. <laughs> I do need you. I support you and I appreciate it. And that's not what I mean, but my I believe in being a mental badass, no matter who you are, because that's the only thing you have when you're at your lowest point. So if you can have a good mental health, then you know, how, then everything else is just bring it on. There you let's go. Figure, oh, let's do this. All right. All right, Joe, this is your time to shine. This is the time I want you to talk about how we get a hold of you to be able to uh, get your services and all that good information. Okay. Ready, set, go. I can be reached on JL Burgess on Facebook. I can be reached at, at the myth of perception on Instagram. I can be reached at Joseph L Burgess, J O S E P H L B U R G E S S on LinkedIn. I have a YouTube channel, which is Mindset Mastery LLC. I have a TikTok, which is Mindset Mastery LLC. I if any one of those ways you can get a hold of me and we can figure anything out. I don't have a website because I just that's the whole building this thing that I've had my my personal issues with. I spent a lot of money on trying to figure all this stuff out and so I'm very leery about I'm just trying to find things organically more or less and because I know that I'm going to do stuff, I know that I'm going to be stuff. I've had people already talk to me about big stuff. And I'm actually also applying to be on different TEDx stages. So I, that will be coming soon about how to change your life in five, just starting in just five minutes a day, because that's what I do is change your life with starting with five minutes a day. All right. That's amazing, Joe. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being on the Undiscovered Entrepreneur. I really appreciate you taking the time out today. Okay. Thank you very much, my friend. All right. All right, school believers, make sure you stay tuned for the wrap up. All right, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Joe Burgess. What a fantastic gentleman. So many stories to tell and such a great, I mean, his presence is absolutely awesome. Something I learned from all of this is to embrace your challenges as opportunities for growth. Joe went from being brain dead for five days to becoming an entrepreneur and a mindset coach. Can you believe that? Every obstacle you face gives you a chance to prove yourself and others wrong. Don't let anyone ever tell you what you can and can't do. Use those doubts as fuel to drive you forward and achieve the impossible. And if anybody says you can't do it, you tell them, just watch me and then go out and do it. It doesn't get much better than that. Transform your mindset to transform your life. I mean, Joe teaches us that understanding your emotional responses and learning how to control them can lead to profound personal growth. Start with just five minutes a day and focus on self-improvement. 
Remember, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. A very special quote. I love that one. So choose to believe in your potential. Choose to face your fears and take control of your narrative to create the life and business that you desire as an entrepreneur. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for another fantastic episode, and we will see you on the next time around. All right, everybody, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>